All right. Hello, everybody. We're doing good this morning? Good. Welcome to all of you who are online watching. It's good to have you as well. Uh, we're going to, as we always do, stand up if you would, and we're going to lift up our voices this morning. This song is called Oh, Praise the Name. Would you take a moment to greet your neighbor and let them know that you were so glad to see them here this morning?
Well, good morning. Welcome to Church in the Village. Um, for you who are here this morning, for you who guys are watching online, welcome to the uh, first Sunday in August. Um, yesterday felt like a Saturday in August. Um, I had a scrimmage in the morning, and then we went down to the Reds game. And uh, that might be the hottest Reds game I've ever been a part of. Um, and we, I thought, man, we were up sitting up high, and I thought, man, going to be good shade. Now we get any shade. It was all right. <laughs> the sun was right on us, but it was a good time. Reds didn't win, but the concert was wonderful. That band, if you guys haven't ever listened to For King and Country, um, I'll let my sister know For King and Country. So they had this sign out in the front, and they were saying, hey, For King and Country, you know, and they had these little lights, these little light signs. And Heather kept asking, what's For King Country? Like, I'm like, it's For King and Country, Heather. It's not For King. <laughs> but it, if you've never listened to For King and Country, they are a totally different style of their own. Um, so, like, their their lead instru- instruments are basically drums and xylophones. And, I mean, they play some guitars and stuff, but they are an interesting um, band to listen to. But they also have an interesting story um, behind their brothers, and it's just a really cool um, you guys would probably recognize some of their songs. So we had a good time yesterday. Men's breakfast was well attended yesterday. Um, I just have a few announcements this morning. Um, we will not have student crossing tonight. Um, um, usually the first week of the month we, we try to take off and then we kind of go hard to, and, and so that's for 6th, 7th up through high school. And so we'll start that back up next week. And um, we are getting ready to start our turn of village crossing starting in the fall. We usually start after Labor Day. So the, this is a question. I didn't have the QR code up this week. We will next week. If you feel like God may be leading you to either host one or maybe you would like to lead one, um, we'd like to know that. We'd like to know that. And then I could meet with you. I'm looking to do late August. I would like to do a training of what village crossings are. And, and so I've talked a lot about it. I think Nicole's got that up. Um, where we want to come alongside you, whatever that village is you're, you're calling. And I don't think Amber would mind. I don't want to you know, embarrass Amber or anything. Her, her son Henry plays um, travel baseball, I think with Midland this year, right? And, and, and so she's, we're wanting to come alongside Amber. How can, we, how can we do that? How can we, with her and Brian, how can we reach her village of, of, of Henry's Midland baseball team. So we're coming up with some ideas what they may look like. And that's what we kind of want to do with you. Whatever that village is, whatever that thing that you like to do, those things that you like to see, those things that, that just draws you to the community around you. We would call that your village crossing, where your faith and who you follow in Jesus Christ matches up to your life, right? And, and, and we like to think we're kind of unique in that way as a church because I'm not looking forward to trying to bring everybody in here to church in the village. We want to be the church in the village. So whatever that village is for you, we want to pray for you. Some of you may would like to host a Bible study at your house or you would like to lead one. We'd like to know that so we could like to train you what that could look like, right? Um, a lot of times people think the hardest thing about a Bible study is, is knowing about the Bible. And I don't think that's it. The hardest part about hosting or doing a Bible study is just getting started. And so um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be flashing another QR code up there if that's something that you would like to do. Um, we are going, I'm looking late August to kind of do a quick, this little training, hour training about what that could look like. Um, and, and so we are going to dive a lot into what your villages are. And we want to come alongside you as a church. And, and as we're going to, as the sermon talks about today is, is I really truly believe when you follow Jesus, you're called to be face to face with people in your life and and so i've been praying for the last month about opportunities of being face to face with people where where god just brings somebody into my life or god brings somebody on my journey where i'm face to face with them and i want to i want to pray for those ordained moments i want to pray for those ordained moments in your life and and wherever god is providing those and how we can be causing it to the fact that God is providing them. So I'm going to pray as we continue to worship this morning. There are some some prayer, prayer things that we have um, as a church that we would like to lift up. The first is um, Nicole Meyer, who usually sits back here in the back, lost her grandmother yesterday. So we want to pray for her and her family. 
Um, she was supposed to go to a game with us, and she just had a sense that she needs to stay with her grandma, so she lost her grandma. Um, we do have a praise, but we want to continue to pray. Our man Bo Laughlin is, is back home. Um, if some of you guys may not know this, Dusty and Stacy just walked in. Um, Dusty gave me a text. I was just ending practice on Friday, and he said, hey, man, Bo's been in the emergency room since 5 a.m., and uh, just getting breathing treatments, and they admitted him Friday night. And so um, Dusty and Stacy, or if you guys, like if it's long saying Dusty and Stacy, you can just call them to Stacy. Um, that's what I like to do. Um, I'm just playing, right? But Dusty and Stacy had to spend a night with Bo, and he got through all his breathing treatments, and he came home. Um, got a surprise visitor with some dilly bars last night. Um, that's what my dad likes to do. And, and so Bo's, Bo's doing better. And uh, so he's getting there. And I loved it when I visited him Friday in the emergency room. I came in, I was like, I think you're going to be all right, Bo. And so when the doctor come in, he goes, hey, Stump said I'm all right. Can I go home? <laughs> so, um, and, and if you have any prayer requests that you would like to make, you can just email us at cmvcarlisle at gmail. And we will send those to the people that, that are part of that team. So I'm going to pray as we continue to worship this morning. Father, I thank you for an opportunity just to come in into a school that that is almost like the tablet where it's just a house of worship this morning. And Lord, how exciting it is that we get to worship face to face because of what your son did for us. So Lord, let us not take that for granted this morning. Let us just continue to seek your face this morning. Lord, fill our minds, our hearts, our souls with you. Flood this place. Turn our lives upside down this morning. We ask this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us? You say to lies, seek my faith. Our hearts reply, your face we see. Come teach us, Lord, reveal your ways, anoint us for the greatest.
We are gathered with wine, thirst, and hunger. We're here to drink our glory and wonder. We're here to cry out, come and fill this place. Come and fill this place. Truly, we come, and we are here, Lord, asking that you would just come fill this place. Because if you will do that, then the word says, when you're lifted up, all men will be drawn to you. And so you know what needs to be said this morning. You alone have the words of life. And I just pray that you would speak those over each one of us in our very unique situations and in our lives. God, you know what needs to be said. You know the healing that needs to come. You know the breakthroughs that are needed. And God, only you have the power to do that. And so we do ask that you would fill this place with your Holy Spirit that you would speak your words because those are the words that free us. Your word says that we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. And so I pray for your truth this morning. We love you and we honor you. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have freed us, that we are no longer slaves. We are not a slave to addiction. We are not a slave to depression. We are not a slave to anxiety. We're not slaves any longer because you have come. So Lord, I pray that if there is any bondage that's left in this place this morning, that it would be done away with this morning completely, once and for all. And Lord, as we sing this next song, it's, it's a declaration of, of just what we expect from our Savior, who is more than powerful enough to set us free. We do expect great things. We do expect to see your presence move forward, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You unravel me with the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. So I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Yes, I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. And love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Blood flows through my veins, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child.
Father, we do thank you this morning that we can say that, that because of your love, your grace, your mercy, no matter what comes our way, even though the anxiety of life, the, the struggles of life, the fears of life can happen, that we can lean into you and we can know that we're no longer just slaves to those things in our life. We are free. We're free. Lord, let us just be in that mercy and grace this morning as we open up your word and we ask this in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, you can head on back with Miss Tiffany back here. Brody's going to come around if you need to give this morning. Um, thank you, Amber. <clears throat> that is one of my favorites, as I know for some of you in here. Um, we're going to finish up Second John today, just kind of give you a, a look at kind of how the next couple of weeks will work. Um, next week we'll start Third John, but Third John's only going to be two weeks long because it is not a very long book. Um, and then we're going to um, have a, a, a little special time of like somebody sharing their journey and their story after that. And then we're going to dive in, I think God's leading me to the Beatitudes. So it won't be an actual book, but we're going to a whole kind of Sermon on the Mount, kind of diving into Jesus, Jesus' is basically first public servant sermon and what that looks like. And, and so we'll uh, dive into that, and we'll see kind of how long that takes us into. But, but as we dive into the, the last two verses of Second John this morning, I'm going to push this back just a little bit. I've got a little ringing. Maybe I'm a little bit too far up. But uh, I was thinking back through the last 25 years of technology right and our world how it's changed in the last 25 years when it comes to technology is amazing i don't want to sound like an old man i've been called an old man more this week than i ever have i don't know why i think it had to do on friday's practice they threw a, like we were practicing onside kicks and they kicked one and i went to jump and my body didn't jump so it looked like this my feet were like semen, right? And I was like, man, hopefully nobody saw that. And some kids saw it, and it was over from that point on, right? So I'm starting to sound like an older man when I say I think back the last 25 years. I, I think like the turn of the century when all these, these uh, or, I shouldn't say that because that was the year 2000. That doesn't seem like that long ago. But I'm talking about like the 19, from 1800s to 1900s. You think about all that changed then, right? Cars started coming in, all this stuff. And I'm like, they had to just... The world had to spin out of control, but when I started thinking about the last 25 years and the technology that's come to us, let's just think about phones this morning, right? Um, I mean, most of us in this room probably remember having one line, and, and if you were talking to somebody on the phone and it was busy for two hours, right? And I remember when we first got call waiting, it was like, man, we moving on up. Like the Jeffersons, right? We're going to east side. We got call waiting. And then have to worry about Heather getting off the phone with her friends, right? And I remember starting to watch the show Saved by the Bell and Zach Morris and his cell phone. You guys remember his big blocky cell phone? Some in, I'm looking at some, in, some of the teenagers in this room. They're like, I have no clue what you're talking about. But that big, just huge cell phone, that was like the only person in the world that had one was Zach Morris, right? And I remember, I remember getting my first cell phone and, and getting a flip phone. I was like, this is crazy. Look at this thing. I'll just flip it up, man. And yeah, man, it's awesome. And now all the way to 2023, and I have a handheld computer in my hand that has a thousand more times of storage than my first desktop computer had. My phone has way more storage than my first desktop. My, I'm talking like a thousand times more storage and RAM and speed, right? And, and nothing shows this progress more than FaceTime. My kids will never know a world of, without FaceTime. And, and so when I remember when FaceTime hit, I, mean, I was like, because I grew up watching the Jets. I'm not that old. The Jetsons started in 1962, but just like everybody around my age, our cartoons were those old cartoons, am I right? But we didn't get, like, very new cartoons. We always had to watch Looney Tunes and the Jetsons and the Flintstones and all this stuff. And, and the, the Jetsons started in 1962, and, and they never really 
like they just had all this technology that was made up, right? And the, the biggest one was is that they would have a phone call and somebody's face would come up. Like I'm still waiting on those flying cars, though. I'm like I, I would love that, but but we're closer to the Jetsons than we ever thought because a lot of times teenagers these days will just be walking around talking on FaceTime the whole time where they can see face to face, right? And that's the thing. We can have conversations now face to face. You can see somebody's face light up when you tell a joke. Or you can see somebody's sadness happen when, when, that, when, when something bad happens. Or you can kind of see how they've missed you when you call them and you FaceTime them, right? See, and it's changed a bit of our relationships. Right? I, I know this younger generation and, and, and like everything they know is through that. There's, it's coming through that, right? So, so as we're living these love letters out in our lives, we need to understand that we are on these journeys together. And it goes beyond just checking in from time to time. We are designed to be in community and that is no different when it comes to our journeys in Christ. We are designed to be in somewhat of a community, right? And, and I know when I'm not in a community, I know when, when I'm kind of isolated from the world just because of the way I act. I get grumpy and I just kind of, ah, right? I look like the troll under the bridge. I mean, physically sometimes, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I am, right? But I, I like... I understand why those guys or the hermits were always grown because we're meant to live in a community, right? So in, in 2 John, we're going to just read the last two verses in 2 John. It's verses 12 through 13. It says this, Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face so that our joy may be complete. And then verse 13, the children of your elect sister greet you. The, the followers of this church, the people in this church greet you, right? So John concludes his letter a little bit different than we would when we email somebody. And even email is kind of an outdated what it used to be. But John concludes this a little bit different than we would when we email somebody. He shares that whatever church he's at at that time wants to greet these people as well. But more importantly, that he really wants to come and see them face to face. He wants to come join them. He wants to see their face. Now, now, granted, we're talking early century, early first century, right? And, and you know, FaceTime was not a thing, but neither was phone calls or either was, you know, emails or either was a getting in a car and going to see somebody, right? So it was writing letters, and if that letter got there, if that letter didn't get there. Right, so this was a twofold thing. The first was they that they understand the importance of walking in the truth of the gospel, that he would take time to come visit them. That John would take time to make the journey across wherever he was going to come visit them face to face, just so they knew the importance of, of the gladness that it brings that they're walking in the truth of what the gospel brings. And see, the second is he wanted to share in their joy that he has received from them walking in the truth. He wanted them to see his face and how glad it made them when, he was walk, when they were walking in the truth. See, here's the importance of being face-to-face. -face. It shows the person that you visit that they are important and that, they, and that being together with them brings joy to you and them on your journey. That's why we try to do so many things. That's why we try to do a men's breakfast. That's why we went to the Reds game. That's why we try to set up so much that we can just so we can be together, so we can share in each other's joy, but also in each other's pain. See, it shows the personal nature that, that these journeys have that God has placed us on. It's all personal. And that he reconciles us one person at a time. So two questions, and I'll dig in. I won't be super long this morning. The first question is this. What is the importance of the visit? What is the importance of the visit? And second is this. How can we make this an important part of our lives, right? So what is the importance of the visit? It's an example, right? So two weeks ago, we had a middle school camp, right? 
and there was an odd number of players in groups. So, so as a defensive staff, I've done this my whole football career. They'll ask us to kind of set up little stations on 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 how kids go through, um, how kids will go through like football positions, right? And, and so we'll set up our stations, and then we'll do it like a tackling circuit, right? So if you guys want to know the secret of being the best football team around, here it is. You block everybody well, you're the best at blocking, and you're the best at tackling. You do those two things, you're going to win a lot of high school football games. Like, I, listen, it, it's mind-numbing, right? You think we're geniuses. But remember, a lot of us were PE teachers. You can laugh at that, right? So those two things, right, those two things are the best. So that's what we practice as a defense staff. We practice tackling a lot, right? So we, we were doing a tackling drill, right? And you had to partner up, and you had to kind of show them really good tackling for them. And that's changed over the years just like phones have as well. I'm not going to bore you with the techniques of tackling, right? So you don't use your head as much. Right, like my dad. That's probably where my dad's hair went. They just used their head all the time tackling. I'm just playing it didn't, right? So, so you teach up and you form up and you rip up through your arms and you go high arms. Dusty remembers. It's the same as when Dusty was there. You want to come up and we can tackle each other. We want to become weird, but we could do it, Dusty, right? Right? So you come and you step with your odd foot and you kind of get your hip across. You don't shoot your head across anymore and you just fly up and you get your hands high. That way brings your hips to it and it's a good, powerful tackle, right? Um, so we were practicing this, and you're just standing across from another guy, and you're just kind of boom, like you're firing in. You're stepping two steps, and you're firing five yards, right, that kind of stuff. But there was an odd number of kids. And when there's an odd number of kids, what happens? A coach has got to be a partner. Well, our head coach was kind of leading this, right? And, I mean, he's the head man. I can't, I can't be the leader if the head coach is out there, right? And, and so I had to partner up with one of the kids. Right, and everything was going great when I was doing it for him, right? And I'm, I'm telling him, I'm like, hey, boom, boom. And, you know, he's a middle schooler, so I could carry him five yards. It looked really cool, and it was fun and all that kind of stuff, right? And, and so when it became his turn to tackle, this is where things went bad. <laughs> all right? I told him, I showed him the perfect example on how to tackle. And so when he came, <laughs> he took two steps back. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> listen, I stepped one time into you, and he took two steps back. And he just got, I, mean, I think he, if you guys that know the Adam Sandler movie, The Water Boy, I think that he made the squeal. <laughs> right? And he just came, no arms, no nothing, and just popped his head straight up into my chin. <laughs> Here was the thing. I thought, man, this guy's going to be enthralled. He's working with a coach. He's been working with a coach that's been coaching for 17 years. Don't he know, man? He's going to follow my example, but here's what happened. He didn't really pay attention to my example. He just wanted to hit somebody. That's all he wanted to do was hit somebody. And I should have knew that. <laughs> I should have said, well, you three go together, right? See, this is what can happen when we're living out these love letters in our lives. We can get so focused on what we think God is calling us to be or the calling we want to have that we will wait for that to come about when in reality we should just be looking at his example and following that. Let me give you just a little example of what that be. I, I knew that I was probably called to the ministry, but I will tell you when I first met Nicole, what was the last thing I wanted to do? Be a pastor, be a, be a preacher. Didn't want to do it. I just enjoyed like working with teenagers. I enjoyed kind of I, I enjoy kind of the structure side of the church. I like I enjoy that stuff. I like where people move through their faith. I enjoy that kind of stuff, right? But you see, a lot of times in our life, we feel like we know what God's calling us to do, and we'll sit and wait for that to come about. But really, we should just be following the example of Jesus. And what is that example that Jesus gives us? It is that He came to Earth face-to-face, -face, lived as a human, lived out the law perfectly because we couldn't, and he died on a cross, so we now have this time with God. There's no barriers between us and God because of what Jesus did, because he came in person. See, here's the things that makes Jesus different from any other religion out there. All other religions are based on our effort to please God so we can get closer to him. 
Think about all of them. Islam, 51%, 49% gets you where gets you to heaven. Buddhism is is that you want to find this nirvana, but it has to do that you've got to do the things right to get this perfect peace in your life. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. But you see, Jesus came to earth as one of us so we can follow him and get to God, and it has nothing to do with our performance. It has everything to do with what Jesus did. See, that's what makes us different it's what makes us on a different path. See, his death, burial, and resurrection is what makes this possible. He left his throne in heaven, and he came to live as one of us. He lived, he laughed, he ate, he grieved, and he shared life with all the people that were there with him. Don't miss the humanity fact of Jesus that he lived just like us. He cried just like us. He was hungry just like us. He was tired just like us. He, when he knew he was going to drink the full wrath of God because of what our sins did, he even looked and said, God, if there's any other way. I bet you in this room and at home with people watching, you've probably made that comment. So is there any other way, God? But he turned and he looked and he said, but what, not my will, yours. See, he became one of us. That's the whole difference what makes this not a religion but a relationship. Luke 2, 7 says this, And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there is no place for them. there was no place for them in the end. See, I don't think I ever understood the greatness of this verse. I just knew it was Christmas. God is with us. He was one of us. He is one of us. So we could come back to him. That's the example. That's what John's saying here. Listen, it's important for me to come see you face to face because the example of God leaving heaven to become humanity, to become human and to live with humans and to live like a human. He was one of us so we could get back to him. He left his home in heaven. And the importance of being face-to-face with him and people, it was important to him. It lets them know they are not alone. And for us followers in this room at home this morning, understand you're not alone because Jesus has seen everything that we've ever seen. He's been tempted with everything that we've ever seen. The Bible, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, right? He was tempted just like all of us. It's not a religion, it's a relationship because the God of heaven sent his son to come and be one of us and be face to face with us. The pastor Russell Russell Moore says it this way, in Christ Jesus, God joins deity to humanity permanently and the human heir of the universe. It's not just that Jesus was human, but rather Jesus is human. It wasn't that he was and he isn't anymore. He's human. See, I, I know this by reading my Bible. I know this by the relationship that I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying my best to follow. But I do know at some point when I see Jesus, I'm going to see the nail scars. I'm going to see the scar on the side because he was human and he did that for us. He did that because God's wrath had to be fulfilled because God's a just God. He's a just God. It's not that we don't have a punishment for sins. That punishment was fulfilled, and I'm going to see that in that human form when I worship for eternity with my Savior and my Lord. So what's the the importance of the visit? The importance of the visit is everything. It wasn't us getting to God. It was God coming to us so we could have God. And so the second one is this. How can we make this an important part of our life? We need to plan. See, when I was younger, I didn't really plan things out. I'm guessing most of you guys were the same way. When I was a teenager, I didn't really plan things out. Drove mom and dad nuts. I wasn't like, school just wasn't important to me. And I would do things. I would do homework and just get lost on my way to school. 
or it would just stay at home, right? And I, I just wouldn't plan things out. I would just kind of do things when I felt like doing them. Is anybody else like that when you were younger? I just, I just felt going out riding my bike. I'm going to ride my bike. But you see, I realized when I was in college that life became a little bit easier if you scheduled and planned things out. See, now I, li- I still like a little bit of spontaneity from time to time. But I know when I need to do things and when not to do things. Um, God put Nicole in my life now so that she puts everything down on schedule for us as well. Um, she gets our big schedule and she likes to put it on our phone schedules and calendars. I'm not sure if the kids look at them ever. They just know we've got to take them places, right? And... Um, but I do, I do understand the importance of scheduling things out. See, I like to listen to a lot of podcasts too, and, and, and here's the thing that they say, a lot of podcasts for pastors will say, hey, you need to date your spouse. Has anybody ever heard that? Date your spouse. And what they mean by that is if you're going to go on a date with your wife or your husband, right, you need to put it on a calendar because when you put something on a calendar, it becomes real. Now, well, me and Nicole go on dates. We never put it on the calendar. So guess what happens to our dates most of the time? They don't really happen, right? They don't really happen. But here's the thing with her now working at Carlisle. I'm going to go up there and eat my lunch in her room every day. And we're going to have a date every day. Number one, because I always forget I don't have any money on my school account. So I use the kid's school account. So when you work at the school, you just go in, and I know Lily doesn't eat lunch, so I'm like, it's my money anyway. Put it on Lily's, right? But here's the thing about dating, right? Or, or not just dating your spouse. It's about anything that's important to you. I can tell you right now, if you don't put it on a calendar, it doesn't happen. See, this is how we can make this con- concept of being face-to-face with people as important in our lives as it was to Jesus. And kind of John, by extension, right? John was Jesus' best friend, was... We need to plan out parts of our life to make sure the people of God, or make sure the people God has called us to knows that they're important to us. There's things in our life that we put down just so people know they're important to us. John 4, 4 says this. That's a very small little snippet of the Bible that we may look over And it says, and he had to pass through Samaria. Right, so Jesus had just got done doing some ministry in Galilee, right? And and, and he's like, we need to go to Jerusalem. We're on our way to Jerusalem, right? But he told the disciples, we need to go through Samaria. Now, if I had a map out here for you to see, um, it would be like us, I'm going to just give you a small scale, right? It'd be like us saying, hey, I need to go to Franklin. but we need to pass through Miamisburg. Now, for you guys that know directions, which is I know is not my two kids sitting here in front of me, we'll go to Austin Landing, and they'll say, we're in Middletown, why aren't we seeing this? I'm like, we're not in Middletown whatsoever, guys. And they're like, yeah, this is Middletown. There's a, there's a Coles. I'm like, there's Coles everywhere. You can't define it, right? Sorry, that's just my little pet peeve right there, right? But it would be like me saying, hey, we need to go to Franklin, but we're going to pass through. It, it's that direction of a difference, right? It's that direction. And so the reason that, that we know, because we're on the other side of passing through Samaria, right? It, it wasn't the way to get to Galilee from Jerusalem, right? But you see, the language, the original language shows that it wasn't Jesus just saying, let's go through Samaria. The language suggests that he had an intentional appointment in Samaria. You see, this is how we need to live the same. We need to live our life with an intentionality that will allow us to share life with the people God has placed in our lives. And so we're on the back side. We're on the far side of this story of Jesus going to Samaria. He knew he had to be at time in the mid part of the day because there was going to be a woman that was afraid to go in the morning to get water because of her lifestyle and what she had done and her relationships that had been broken all around her. He knew that she was going to be at that water, at that well at noon. 
She had no clue what was getting ready to happen to her life. And because of that, a whole town in Samaria was one to Jesus Christ. Because he said, listen, we have to pass through Samaria. Because there was an intentionality. There was an appointment, a divine appointment that Jesus had to make that altered the course of hundreds of with each other and to share with who God's placed in our life. Shannon Alder says it this way. Beauty is not who you are on the outside. It is the wisdom and time you gave away to save another struggling soul like you. So in my terms, it's simply this. The beauty isn't my chisel physique. I knew my sister would laugh at me. <laughs> right, beauty's not in what I put on this morning or how my haircut looks or how, how tan or whatever it is. Beauty is really the time and wisdom that I gave to be with other people. So I'm going to ask Amber to come back up. This is something recently I've been trying to do in my life. I've been trying to, um, for some that you may know that my life, like, is busy. When, when August hits, my life becomes busy. June, July, not eh, somewhat, but not like crazy. But, you know, I, I coach. I've coached for a long time. And some people would just say, hey, just, just give that up. Your life wouldn't be that busy. But here's what I want you to understand. It's not just about the coaching. It's not just about my job at school. It's not just about being a pastor. It's the intentionality that I'm trying to live my life by. So what I'm trying to do is whatever moment I'm in, I try to save this quick, not even 10-second prayer. Whatever you want to do with this time, do it. I'll literally, just like I'm trying to pray here, Dear Heavenly Father, whatever you want to do with this time, do it. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. I don't even know if my wife knows I do that. So, eight to two this week, I had practice two a days, right? And every time I pull in, dear Heavenly Father, whatever you want to do with this time, do it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. When I came home, whatever you want to do with this time. And this has been an intentional effort for the last month. And I can give you dozens of times. Dozens of times. Not because I'm a super pastor, or not because I'm a super Christian, not because I'm a super follower. It's just I've chosen the last month to try to be intentional. So I was getting ready to end and leave Friday. And I don't know why, but I was like, I, you know, I, I'm going to pray right now. Whatever you want to do with my time, whatever you want to do with this time, just do it. And a good friend texted me. And so this stinky, sweat-filled coach, pastor, went. And, and one of my biggest joys this week, probably not for his mom and dad, was to go in and see my good buddy, Bo. And that's just the example. I wasn't, I'm not doing that just to say, hey, look, I, I did this. That's just a small snippet example of when you pray that prayer, the things that will open up. And I didn't want to bother Stacy. She was in there. I, didn't, I definitely didn't want her to smell because we had just got, it was hot Friday, and it, I smelled. I was just out of practice. I'm going to tell you what Stacy probably doesn't know. Because I prayed that prayer. It wasn't that I got to go see Bo and Bo. Listen, Bo sick is still Bo. If you don't know Bo, get to know Bo. He will make you laugh. He'll make you feel like the most important person in the world. So I walked out. Number one, I felt like, man, man, I prayed and Bo's going to be healed. And, well, no, they got admitted. 
So I don't, I'll, I don't have the best record when I pray for you. So I'll go visit you at the hospital, but I'll bring Dad. He can pray for you, right? But I walked out, and one of our players' dads was the receptionist. And, and I was there for like 35 more minutes just talking to one of our players' dads. And I had conversations. It's a private conversation, right? When we make it as important as Jesus made it, lives will change. Not because of what we do, but because of what he did. So let us live out the example that was laid before us and love life together. Let us plan parts of our time and knowledge to share with those in our lives so we can live just like Jesus did. And ultimately, not just live like Jesus did, but love like Jesus did. It's a simple moment of just saying, take this time and do whatever you want with it. It will change your work. It will change your off days. It will change your days at school. It will change your days with just hanging with friends when you live with the intentionality that God is invited in to your life. It will change it. It will change it forever. It will change your family. It will change your friends. It will change everything. The moment that they know that you care enough just to carve out some time for it. Because he left his throne for us. So two questions. I'm done this morning. The first one is simply this. Is it time for you to live in this example? So this is what I mean. Is it time for you to live in this example? Is it time for you to follow this example? Is it time to dive into what Jesus did on the cross for your sins, but raising from the grave to give you new life? So is it time for you to live? Listen, that, there's no list of rules. There's no list of things that we have. It's just a relationship with Jesus and an intentionality to live like he did. That's it. If there was a list of things that we could follow, that's what we would have been given. But we were given Jesus. I want to say we were given. Jesus gave us him. So the second question is this. How are you planning out this your life? I just told you an example of mine. Whatever I'm doing, I'm just praying that prayer. It can be messy. It can be hurtful. It can be glorious. It can be just the mundane. But when you give your time and when you give your life to Jesus, lives will change. So I'm going to ask you guys to stand as I pray this morning. Father, we thank you for the example that you set this morning to us. The importance of physically being there. The importance of what you did for us. Lord, I pray for the one this morning that's ready just to dive in. I pray that they have the courage just to stop somebody here today and just say, you know what, I want to know more about following Jesus. And Lord, I pray this morning for a group this size in here this morning or even the ones watching at home this morning, that Lord, that we just take this serious, that we, we dive into the lives that you've given us, that we're intentional in the fact that we want to give it to you and you do whatever you want in those moments of our life. Let us live by the example of, of what being face-to-face -face and being in somebody's life really is. Let us just take moments out of our busy schedules just to say, this is intentional for you to do whatever you want in it, Lord. Because you get the glory. And, and Lord, we pray just use us to turn this world upside down. We ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This world, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Now your blood flows through my veins. 
guys for joining us this morning um remember if there's any way that we as a church can come alongside you and help you out in this um reach out to us we'd love to do that so hopefully you guys have a great sunday and you have a great week and we'll see you guys next week